Jesus said the time would come. Oh, yeah. And keep a finger in Matthew 24 because I'm not done. You have to uh, take the various fabrics of Scripture and you have to take the needle of the Holy Spirit, the thread of the Holy Spirit, and let the Holy Spirit guide you into interweaving all the fabrics together in order to create the garment that God wants to present unto humanity. And you see the Spirit weaving us through Scripture, tying again together the garments of the words of Christ, the garments of His prophets, the garments of his apostles. And it's a beautiful thing. We must be led by the hand of God. Now, before you go there, keep your finger there. Go back to Matthew because I missed something. Verse 21. This term is used exclusively of the last days. Verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation. Now, the world has had tribulations, but this is a term, great tribulation, that separates this period of time in the last days from all other periods of time that ever existed in humanity. Great tribulation. Such that was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. In other words, this great tribulation is going to signify the beginning of the end, and it is going to last until the end. End of the world as we know it. Not necessarily the end of the world. The end of the world where men reign. Satan reign. Over earth. At the end of the tribulation. Jesus becomes the king of kings. He begins to take control of the world. And he then sits on his throne ruling the world. Without end. World without end. So all of these things is to sweep away the evil of man and Satan and usher in the kingdom of God. Keep a hold of that. Keep your mind on that. That is the purpose. It's to let us see how Jesus will reign on earth. How he will close out man's dominance, Satan's period, his season of reading and controlling and manipulating mankind and even trying to manipulate God, and how Jesus will set it all in his right place in the end. This great tribulation period must end or Jesus will never sit on his throne. It must begin or he'll never sit on his throne. So then we must know about it, how much of it affects us. Now, we go to Daniel. And wow. Daniel chapter 9. Now you have to understand Israel was still carried away into exile for their idolatry and for serving other gods and for their immorality and for turning their backs on God. And at the end of this exile, we see Daniel pray. For some reason, Daniel sensed that the end of the period of exile, of being carried away into Babylon, was coming to an end. And he says in verse 3, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord God and made my confession and said, O Lord, great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments, 
We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have re rebelled even by parting from thy precepts and from thy judgments. And that's how they got into exile. And that's how you'll get into exile in your life. You will find yourself bound. You will find yourself um, in prison. Not ever being what you can be. If you decide to live a life of idolatry. A life of ignoring God. A life of rejecting God's precepts and his principles. You'll find yourself in the same place Israel was. But the time was coming to the end of that exile. He began to make prayer to God. And he continues on through the first part of chapter 9. Um, and he confesses sins of Israel, the nation, and even his own sins. And now he begins to ask God to restore Israel. Uh, to rebuild Jerusalem. Or to bring Israel out of captivity back into Jerusalem. He had enough sense to know through the prophets as he read the books that God would have mercy uh, after their exile and bring them back into their land. And it is for this that Daniel was praying. And as he continued to pray, uh, verse 20, uh, verse 19, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. And do. Defer not for your own sake. O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sins and the sins of my, my people Israel and presenting my supplications before the Lord uh, my God, for the holy mountain um, of God, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, the, the our, our super angel, uh, Gabriel, uh, whom I had seen in a vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come for to give thee skill and understanding. Young men and women, you should pray for skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, uh, the commandment came forth from God. As soon as we start praying, God hears. Uh, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Verse 24, and this is why we call it Daniel's 70th week. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, determined upon thy people. Within these seventy weeks, it's going to all be worked out. It's going to be done after these seventy weeks. So if you can understand these seventy weeks, you can understand what God's going to be doing. Upon thy people and upon thy holy city, to finish the transgressions. Ooh. Listen to that. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, the Jews. And upon thy holy city, Israel, to finish the transgressions. I'm going to seal and bring to an end your transgressions. You keep mounting up 